This is our lesson one uh, topic on work essentials. And uh, by the end of this lesson, you're going to be able to describe work and how it's related to energy, calculate work using the work formula, and know the correct metric units for work. So the vocab is uh, work, energy, conservation, we're not going to get to today. Uh, net force, we'll use that old goodie again, and also the word jewel which is kind of something that we did in our reading on Tuesday with the sub. It rhymes with cool, so when you read that, it's Jewel. It's some dude's last name. All right, so this is going to be topic one, work essentials, on page 12. And the first thing, this is like for the next three weeks, the overlying topic is going to be all about how these two words connect. And these aren't like the kind of dictionary definitions in physics, but the way that I'm going to give it to you kind of describes the relationship. So in general, energy is, is the ability to do work. So if you have a battery that has energy in it, it can do work if you put it in like a toy that can like a car can now drive across the floor. And work is a transfer of energy from one form to another. Um, for, oops, oh boy, we're back. All right, so for example, if you're lifting a weight, you're doing work, you're actually converting um, chemical energy kind of stored in your body from the food that you've eaten into mechanical energy of lifting something. So you're transferring it from one type to another, and that's when work is done. Or same with um, a battery transforms another type of chemical energy in a battery into actual motion of the car. So that work that's being done is just a transfer of energy. But in general, you've got this like, well, energy lets you do work, and work changes the energy. And it can go kind of back and forth, not quite forever, though. And we'll learn about why not. There's always some energy wasted somewhere. It's never perfect. Here's your formula. Work equals force times distance. In the book, it gave you some more, and we'll get into that on topic three. And also for the units, joules equals newtons times meters. So work is in joules. Force is in newtons. Distance is in meters. Um, so if the distance is given in centimeters, you need to convert it. So work is similar to force, right? So force times distance. In this example, a pitcher applies, say, 80 newtons of force from all the way back at the end point of the throw, applies the force to the ball all the way until the pitcher releases the ball. And we'll say this distance is 2.5 meters. If the applied force averaged 80 newtons over that distance, well, how much work was done? Well, that would simply be 80 times 2.5, oops, 80 times 2.5 is uh, 2.5 times 80, 200. So that would be 200 joules of work were done. So that's kind of like the, the type of, you'll get at least one math question for topic one on that part of the test, and it'll, it'll be something like this using this formula. Okay, an important fact is that if there's no change in distance, then there's no work done. Now, this seems weird, right? If you push on something you can't move, you're trying to lift something that's too heavy, or whatever, it, it feels like you're working hard. But technically in physics, you're kind of doing no work. So let's look at the first the formula example. If, if force is one gazillion, but the distance is zero on this big wall, well, then the work is going to equal zero. Now, you feel like you're exerting energy because there's actually some motion, say, between the muscle fibers in your body. So there's technically work done on your body, which is why you sweat and exert yourself, but there's no work being done to the wall. So we're observing the system. The thing that we're observing is the wall, and there'd be no work being done. Another thing, only net force parallel to motion counts towards work done on an object. So if someone is pushing something and it does have some displacement, well this isn't the only force acting on the object. There's gravity pulling it down, there's the normal force pushing up on it, but these forces up and down 
have no application on the actual displacement, the direction it's moving. So we can just ignore these. And when you're working with your formula, this will come in handy later, we're only going to count stuff that's parallel. So forces in the direction of motion would be like positive work. And there might be some resisting forces slowing it down, which would be like negative work, something that's resisting the work you're trying to do on it. So it all goes back to that net force idea. So this is a nice um, building on a lot of what we already know. Here's another sample question. If it takes 500 joules of energy to move a cow 10 meters, how many joules of energy would it take? By the way, capital E is how I'll usually write energy. Capital W is how I like to write work. We're used to this stuff. Uh, would it take to move the same cow 20 meters or say 30 meters? Uh, think to yourself, can you answer it? Uh, to move it 20 meters, well, it would take twice as much energy. To move it 30 meters, it would be, well, three times as much energy. So another big idea that you might be asked to describe is that in uh, when you're talking about work, force, and distance, they're all directly related. Um, work is directly related to force. If you apply more force, more work's going to be done. Work is directly related to distance. If you travel more distance, then more work is done. And uh, that's it. We're operating on the TED Ed lesson website now, so be sure to look at the um, next steps. Um, think and those other buttons down below to find out what you need to do next. Okay.